yeah! <laughs> Making it look easy! Welcome to the woods of beautiful Pennsylvania, specifically the Roush Creek Off-Road Park, where we're going to show you how to get started off-roading. We've got the perfect truck, a cheap, beat-up, semi-capable off-road vehicle, and uh, the correct attire. I'm Andrew Collins, you're watching Truck Yeah, let's go break some stuff. We've been hanging a lot of crap on this tired old Toyota, but really, it's a pretty perfect place to start off-roading. It's reliable and usable enough to get you to the trail on road, but it's built up just enough to help you have a lot of fun out here. Solid, proven drivetrain, four-wheel drive, of course, with low range. Decent tire, mild lift, and uh, you're not going to mind getting a few extra scratches on it. So we've parked up on a little bit of a crag to give us the uh, Bush Mechanic lift. Now, normally when you're driving a truck like this, it's going to be rear-wheel drive. Engine comes down, spins the stick, spins the wheels. Now, when you throw that lever and drop it down to 4x4, this thing, called the transfer case, is going to come into play. It's going to basically add an extra gear, so the power moves up through this little stick and spins the front wheels. Boom! Four-wheel drive. Now, we're going to go walk around the parking lot, see what the other boys brought, and uh, talk to Kyle, our expert off-roader around these parts, and see what he has to say. So less is more off-road, and uh, one of the great things about Wrangler, quick release doors. Leave them up the uh, fence post, lock them up, and go have fun, enjoy the breeze. The rigs like that are more designed for hard floor rock crawling, really intense articulation, and uh, crushing serious obstacles. You get all kinds of vehicles coming into off-road parks, from Jeep Wranglers, fresh off the dealer lot, to scratch-built monster buggies. But you can have a lot of fun on pretty basic equipment, as Roush Creek's manager and resident off-road instructor, Kyle Bookter, can explain. You've brought a beautiful Jeep. Looks great. What have, uh, what have you done to this thing? Well, basically, it's already a nice Jeep out of the factory. It's a Rubicon package, so it has the locking differentials and a 4-to-1 low transfer case. I just did a small lift to it, added my 35-inch uh, BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, my worn winch, and a couple other small accessories to make it easily to go through the trails. Beautiful. So maybe I'll show you my rig. Okay. What we've got here is a 96 Forerunner that uh, some guy who hates me lent, it, <laughs> lent over to me. I've got a jump box because the battery dies all the time. Okay. A uh, tire inflator because at least two tires have leaks. Water, because we're going to be out here probably stuck, and a uh, shovel that I stole from my little cousin's sandbox. How far do you think we're going to get? Actually, out here you'll get pretty far. Most of it is driving skill, not necessarily the vehicle. When you get into the harder terrain, that's when you really want the vehicle modifications. But if you're looking just to go out, have a good time, test your limits, test the vehicle's limits, you have a perfect platform here. Toyota makes a great vehicle. You have a small lift on this, which will be great for getting through the terrain, helping you over some of the smaller obstacles. You have a all-terrain-ish type of tire, which will be great for getting through the stuff, but yet not too aggressive for the road. Cool. Well, Kyle, looks like we're pretty much set on the gear. Uh, let's take it on the trail and see how we go. Sounds good to me. Help me pack uh, some of the stuff up here. Yeah. And basically what we want to do is just take our time, feel the vehicle out, get a good understanding of everything. And now that we're actually entering the park, you want to make sure you go into low range. Oh, sure. So basically transmission in neutral. Yep. And then go ahead and shift it into low. Drive. There we go. Right. Yep. All right. And the Whoa! Re yep, hey. Notice that power. <laughs> That's what we want low range for. Yeah. Uh, in high range, you'll pull up to like a log or a rock, and you'll really have to give it a lot of gas, and then the front it'll lunge over it right. once it spools up. Right. Where in low range, it's all but gonna idle up and over the obstacle. So that's what we want. It's less work for the vehicle, less work for you, and just makes it a little bit easier to get through the obstacles. Sure. So off-roading out here is really nothing like sort of Baja desert bashing, man. This is a totally different animal, isn't it? It is. Um, Baja desert, you've got a lot of speed, sand, things like that where everybody's flying through. Right. Out here it's a little bit more technical and thought out of where you want to put your tires and stuff like that. Right. Now there are groups that come out and like to go through rocks fast, 
uh, different race setups and um, different organizations do stuff a little faster over the rocks. But sure. for the average person, it's just slow and steady and taking your time. Mm -hmm. You're out here to enjoy the environment and wildlife and your vehicle and what it can do. So you want to take your time and preserve that and enjoy that. If you're going through fast, you don't get a chance to enjoy the surroundings. And you're more likely to break down. Exactly. Then you'll be enjoying the surroundings a little too much. <laughs> exactly. Once we got through a few fundamentals, we pushed our Toyota just a little bit harder. And just start working your way down slowly. We're going to read the terrain as we go. You can see the high spots on the right, and there's just a little bit of a wall on the left. So basically what we want to do here, instead of dragging over the higher points, we want to stay over to that left-hand side and work it down as like a stair step, one step at a time. And this is where you use the gearing. And what you can use is your left foot on the brake, your right foot on the gas, right. and just slowly feather it through. Sounds good. Yeah. Just like that. You, that's a, great speed you're going through, just nice and slow. Yeah, it's a great line, just take your time like that. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Yeah. And it's there. great after every step to stop and kind of compose yourself so you're not getting yourself overwhelmed or intimidated right. and you're not going too fast. Go just slightly to the left. There you go. Nice and easy. You got a little bit of a drop here on the passenger side. Yeah, nice and easy. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Ooh. Just like that. So just keep gas. taking your time till you're completely out. A lot of drivers will forget about the back end, so as soon as the front tire's clear, they start to drive out of it, and then the back end drags. Right. Wait till you're completely through the obstacle before you start moving ahead. I like it. Just work your way up slow, right, Rocks? Work your way up slow, just like that, nice and easy. Feel the vehicle out, and when you feel it hit an object, just lightly crawl up over it, slow and steady. Basically, <laughs> as slow as you possibly can go, so you can finesse your way through it. Uh, slow as possible and fast as necessary, Correct. I've heard before, yeah. Yep, that's a great term. <laughs> the vehicle will do the work. The manufacturer built it to do this type of stuff, so you can't fight it. you got to let it do its thing. That will also help preserve the vehicle. Oops. Oh, just like that. <laughs> You're doing great. So what would you say are some minimum modifications? Like somebody comes out here, they, they just buy like a 90s 4Runner or, or a Wrangler. You, can you pretty much come out with a stock vehicle, maybe some good tires? You certainly can. And you can, as long as your tires have some sort of tread on them. You don't yeah. want to come out with bald tires because you're not going to get anywhere. Right. But if you come out with tires with some sort of tread on them, most people start out with a small lift, neck size up tires, or a couple size up tires. Or do a little research and find out what works well for everybody else. So with this vehicle, a four inch lift may be able to fit you 33s, or maybe a six inch lift is 33s. It all depends on the vehicle type. But you don't want to go and buy a two inch lift, throw the next size tire up, and then realize six months down the road, hey, I should have went to the next size. Right. Do a little research, find out exactly where you're looking to go and what you want to do modification wise, and then upgrade that way. A nice 33 to a 35 inch tire is going to be a great all around on and off road tire. And it gets you at a nice look, a nice stance. You can do a lot of trails off road, but yet you can still keep it streetable. We let Kyle get back to work, and he let us mess around on our own for a little bit. Well, when you're trying to get your way up, uh, real technical stuff. Sure helps to have some buddies keeping eyes out on obstacles you can't see. As soon as you get that nose up vertical, you can't see anything over it. So these guys are uh, pilot's eyes and ears. You might have heard the Jeep bros talking about airing down their tires. Now that is literally letting some air out of the tires. The reason you do that is less pressure, makes the tire less firm, and turns it into really more of a tread-like pattern. It gets you better traction in something soft like sand or mud. Um, coming down here from the highway, you're probably going to be running something high, 40 PSI maybe. Down on the trail, drop it down to 20, 18. The, tr the uh, conditions will sort of dictate what you want exactly, but the more you drive off-road, the uh, better of an idea you're going to have on what you need for what sort of terrain. So a device like this is perfect. Plug it in, tells you exactly what pressure you're at, and uh, when you have a little release, you can just sort of dictate exactly how much air you want to let out and monitor it very closely. Now, 
do not do this if you don't have a compressor or any source of air otherwise because uh, you're going to have a very sloppy and uh, poor fuel economy ride home if I'm running on low PSI. It's nice to have a passenger for things like this, to give you the uh, spots you can't see, but we'll make do. All right, just like we practiced, this is what we were born to do, baby. Ever so gently, as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. Right now, that is just a dead walk. Easy now, baby. Walking it right down. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Little drop. We're okay. Little, little drop. Walk her on down. Oh. You got this. You got this. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh. Ooh. A little more. Getting close. Getting close. Come on. Just a little more. All right. All right. Almost clear. This is going to be interesting. Well, I wonder. I wonder. Can you get up? Can you get up? I think I can. I think I can. Just idle on up, baby. You got this. You go born to do this. You. Oh, oh, you're up. You're over. You're doing it. You got this, girl! Yeah! Good Toyota! Good job! Oh, yeah! Oh, making it look easy! Well, the truck's muddy, and it's still running. That means we had a good day off-road. Thanks for hanging out with us. Check back with Truck Yeah again real soon now. the left. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to get, I'm going to come up here, put one tire here, one tire there, driver tire, work for, ah, it's a little steep for the center. Mm, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to pat, driver tire, passenger tire. Yep, you know what? I'm just going to go up the same way I came down. <laughs> 